Welcome to our talk on container networking. My name is Gaetano Borgione, and I'm a senior staff engineer at VMware, where I do have fun driving technical strategy, innovation for cloud native application, and SDN solution. Today, we are going to talk about container networking. Let me go over a quick agenda overview of what will be covered during this learning journey. We will explain what containers are, and go over their basic nomenclature. We'll elaborate the concept of microservices and the relationship with containers. We'll then shift our focus on networking requirements for containers. We will walk over fundamental networking requirements, understand the relevancy in the container context. Once we define what networking requirements for containers are, we will focus on how to build a service for containers. We will uncover critical services aspects like service discovery, load balancing, uh, that are important to design scalable and dynamically provisioned applications. We'll cover uh, complex topics as well uh, as demanded by real life deployment requirements. We will focus on security and multi tenancy. Last but not least important segment of this presentation, we'll go over a realistic design exercise. We will illustrate how, in practical terms, we can design an on-premise private cloud solution, cast iron on container technology. The first topic we will cover today are going to be container nomenclature and microservices. Let's start our journey defining what containers are. Containers are lightweight, standalone, executable unit of software. They provide a practical way to render uh, the software to run and uh, its dependencies, runtimes, libraries, system tools, all as a package. The result is a software bundle decoupled from the environment where the software is going to run on. This is great for portability, since software can uh, be written without taking into account the specific environment it's target for. To better understand how valuable containers are, Let's analyze the motivating factor leading to container deployments. Such requirements are very frequently different in nature, as a function of uh, the individuals that are looking at this technology to help solve real-life deployment needs. For example, developers' demands for a technology able to let them write in a fast and seamless way new applications. The solution needs to have a few attributes. Need to be portable across the mostly common deployed running environments, uh, while trying to contain the size of the software package to make it really lightweight. And the container solution needs to be able to be provisioned, so deployed quickly. On the other end, IT folks care more for operational aspects related to containers, a very disjoint set of requirements from the developer's one. Containers for them need to be secure, isolated, uh, to avoid any inference among uh, different uh, deployments. Uh, the solution needs to be able to have uh, robustness, be redundant, able to guarantee production-level SLA. And uh, we want to have uh, richness in terms of functionality to satisfy heterogeneous level of requirements, for example, to manage and monitor applications. It's quite useful to understand uh, how a container look and feel in the contour of the surrounding environment. A typical analysis that uh, help understanding how containers are deployed is the comparison with a similar model as applicable to virtual machine. When a virtual machine is deployed, you really provision an environment with a full copy of everything, the guest OS, the library, things you need to run your code as well as the application code. Containers, instead, share the kernel, the host OS, and, whenever appropriate, binary library. A container engine takes care of abstracted underlying platform details from the container environment. Each one of the two type of deployment has pros and cons. One of the most commonly brainstormed aspects of this comparison is that a, a typical virtual machine, usually, takes tens of seconds to start, whereas a container takes only a few seconds and often even less than a second to do the same thing. Additional aspects of this comparison rotate around isolation requirements. If you need a full isolation with guaranteed resources, standard virtual machine is usually the way to go. 
But if you just want to isolate process from each other and uh, want to run a large number of them on a reasonably sized host, then containers seems the most viable solution to satisfy similar requirements. To explain how networking plays a key role in the context of container-based deployments, we picked a specific use case involving all necessary ingredients of uh, virtual networking solutions. The use case selected is the one related to microservice-based application. In microservice terms, classic monolithic application can be redesigned, splitting them in small independent components able to mutually interact. The advantage of a microservice application are really significant. We will highlight the most relevant benefit over the next few slides. Talking about microservice, it's important to introduce the cloud-native application term. A cloud-native application refers to a new type of application built following the microservice model. Such applications are now becoming more and more popular and frequently, but very improperly, used by marketing folks as a synonymous for new generation application based on container technology. But what are the fundamental pillars of a cloud-native application? As mentioned, the idea behind microservices is that a complex application is decomposed in many tiny services. Each service capability is exposed via a clean external interface, for example, a REST API. Each service can provide its own data store. And uh, from an operational point of view, this new design model allows different teams to operate at different speed. Each development team is so responsible to design and develop one or more service, taking care of its own API and contract. The only thing to honor when services refer one to another is the spot set to API. Once the external exposed API is set, is defined, you are off to go. Each team can pick their favorite development framework of choice, as well as their data store framework of choice as long as you honor the northbound REST API and the API contract. As long as you do that, the internal service implementation can change over time without affecting the interdependent services. Scaling an application became also much simpler, since the scaling property of the application can be focused and optimized for critical microservices, where performance and bottleneck are identified. Now, what is typically seen is that uh, this type of microservice application is developed use container technology. Consequently, there is a lot of buzz around the microservices and the perception that this technology is completely tied to containers. As a matter of fact, API and interface are what really define a microservice architecture. So a microservice could potentially be built using uh, interchangeably containers and or virtual machine. Still, containers are seen as an ideal way to package a microservice due to the low footprint, quick time to start them up, and fast way to repackage and redeploy applications. Microservices are attractive, but challenging at the same time. Designing a microservice is equivalent to design a distributed application. As such, building and testing distributed application is much more complex than building a monolithic one. The bet the industry is making on microservice application is that uh, this new model, while technically more complete to design and test, will allow application to scale better and in a more predictable and controllable way. Whoever designs a microservice needs to address a few requirements. The solution needs to provide service discovery, to decouple a logical service from the effective pool of service systems that render the service itself. Address auto-scaling needs uh, is fundamental too, uh, to adapt to the service traffic handling capability to load variation, peak hours, seasonal load. Proactively identify scalability issue, for example, due to microservice subjected to hyphen out or adding a traffic bottleneck, it's also quite critical. Redundancy and fault tolerance 
to monitor and replace uh, responsive or misbehaving service systems have to be others as well. Beside individual well-defined microservices, an application developed using this new model requires many elements to enable its full potential. First, connectivity matrix, rendered via virtual networks to interconnect all the required microservices. A service discovery and a load balancer mechanism to decouple a service from the effective instance and to enable, for example, functionality like monitoring and auto-scaling. And a front-end component to allow users residing on external networks or the internet to access, so use the SPOS services. We will explore in details each one of such elements over the next sections of this talk.